Welcome back to Dr. Hollowed. We all make mistakes, but some are worse than others. In today's video, we're taking a look at the absolute worst mistakes people have ever made. These stories will make you cringe, laugh, and maybe even think twice before your next big decision. If you enjoy hearing about epic fails, hit that subscribe button. Not watching a movie with my dad before he died from cancer. My dad was months into his chemo treatments at this point, and he just asked me one day if I wanted to watch some old movies with him for a bit. I declined and said I needed to work on school stuff. I was living at home at the time, and I was taking about 15 hours of classes, so I was generally busy, but not then. It tore me apart to see my dad that way. The drugs had been rough on him, and it pained me to see him like that. My dad passed maybe a month or two later, and it is still, to this day, my biggest regret. We both loved movies, and I would give anything to go back and watch anything with him. I still randomly have moments of despair thinking about it, and I know he would not want me to continue beating myself up, but it's hard. Don't have regrets like mine. Spend those precious moments with your loved ones. My decision to stay and try to help my mom. After my grandmother died, my cousin and I were set to inherit a house, but we gave our halves to her. At the time, I was living in Europe, in Budapest, for 3.5 years. I was so close to residency. Then I saw she was having trouble financially when I came to visit for a family reunion. I had a return ticket for my job, but I fucking stayed because I felt bad. We made an agreement that I would pay half of everything and then later give her a bit extra so I could save to help my fiancé come here. In order for this to work, I'd like to live in the house so I'm not paying rent somewhere plus half of the bills, and I wanted to be around the dogs, which I also take care of. Then she took advantage of this by buying more things and investing in the house, which she agreed to sell because she couldn't afford it without someone helping her. Immediately after, I didn't have a way back, things changed. She hated my now ex-partner and would demand time and time again that we break up, even though she was nothing but kind to her. She decided she wanted more money immediately. She has threatened to off herself by putting a gun to her head, pushed me, hit me, and tried to choke me because she would start conflicts and not let me walk away or didn't like what I had to say. She's tried to cut me off from other parts of the family that know and want to help me. I lost everything because of this decision, but I'm slowly rebuilding, and I think next year I'll be able to find my way back, maybe to Prague this time or back to Budapest. I don't know, I just want the life I had back, and this time she won't get to be a part of it. When I was 14. Maybe? I went to use the bathroom, like any normal time. I pissed, wiped, flushed, washed my hands, and walked back to my room. Now this toilet has a habit of making that noise toilets make after you flush, but for about two minutes longer than normal. Nothing ever happened until that night, when my brother came running into my room and told me the whole living room and hallways were flooding and the toilet was overflowing and wouldn't stop running. I walked out of my room to see my mom freaking out. For some context, my family is lower or middle class. My parents worked and they owned the home, so we were lucky to have a roof to live under, but we never had extra money to go out to eat, go to movies, or even go on vacation. We always ate very basic and easy meals so my parents could afford the home and bills. I never even left my home state till I was 16 or almost 17. My father also has a massive spending problem, which leaves money very tight for my family. This was almost 9 years ago, mind you. Seeing the way my mom was reacting, seeing her crying and on her knees and begging for life to just stop being shitty for her, left a permanent image in my head. The only other time I've seen my mom cry like this was Christmas time. December 23, 2023, and that was when my dad left a note and took off, and we thought he offed himself for hours. My mother was broken, and that moment will forever haunt me. He's still alive, I found him in time. Now the whole house was soaked in flooding, and my mom was freaking out trying to turn the water off and get the shop vac to suck up the water and crying and saying how she doesn't know where she's going to get the money to fix this and trying to figure out what bills she can push to pay for this. Yeah, I never told her or fessed up to it. They think it was an older brother, and I let them think it. It still haunts me and makes me want to cry, thinking of her reaction to it. I spent 11 years in retail. It seemed like a great idea at the time, better and less toxic than my previous seasonal job. I was dumb and believed that giving it my all and being devoted to the company would take me places. I got passed over for numerous promotions, got screwed over by friends who didn't care who they had to step on to get themselves ahead, and ended up getting fired on a technicality over a decade ago because a coworker was gunning for my job. In retrospect, it was the best thing that ever happened to me work-wise. I had been stuck in a rut, and my self-esteem had been so low that I was convinced I didn't deserve better. 
Thank goodness I ended up in a job I love with great people. I just regret the time wasted. I killed 38 chickens by pure mistake. I was 10 and wanted to let my parents know how many chickens we had. So I started placing them in a barrel as I counted them. At some point, I noticed it was way quieter and dumped the barrel over to see what was going on. I didn't understand at the time that stacking things in an enclosed space creates a breathing issue. So now we had all these dead chickens, including our beloved birdzilla, intersex, I believe. After attempting chicken CPR, which obviously didn't work, I came into my house bawling that I was a chicken murdered and needed to go to jail. Once my parents fully understood what was going on, they laughed so damn hard and said my punishment was to bury the chickens. I was punishing myself hard enough, and my dad explained how O2 worked. I took an antibiotic for a possible infection. I never had to begin with what the doctor gave me. I didn't realize the medication was banned in certain countries and had a black box warning. Doc called a week later, after I had taken it for six days, and says I actually didn't have an infection. Antibiotics were never necessary. I am now disabled and have full body small fiber neuropathy from it, among other things, at 25 years old. It affects my vision, bladder, muscles, walking, etc., causing nerve damage all over. I have had this for two years now, life is a struggle, unfortunately. I made many mistakes growing up, but here's one that stands out the most. In early high school, I hurt people emotionally through targeted bullying and social exclusion. I was picked on for many years prior to this, so it was mostly redirected anger. I hated the world and most of the people around me. However, this changed during the later years of high school, and I started accepting people and vice versa. I'm not sure how this came about. I'm in my 30s now and a completely different person. I get emotional thinking of all the times I've made people's lives hell for no reason, and it's hard to forgive myself for it. If you are going or went through a tough time in school as a result of bullying, I'd like to apologize on behalf of the bullies. Most of them will certainly regret it at some point. Deciding to have an abortion for the wrong reasons. I do not regret the abortion, but I hold a lot of resentment about how it happened. I panicked as a teenager, rushed my ex through it, and didn't even give him a chance to talk to me because I was so horrified at being talked about within my family and my relatives judging me for being the first to not only have a child outside of marriage, but teen pregnancy was unfathomable to me. I'm 28 now, and their relatives are not a factor in my life, and I'm very bitter about how I rushed myself and my ex, and basically trauma blocked it out of my head because of the opinion of those who didn't matter. The only opinions that mattered were mine and those of my partners, and I didn't think about either. My ex suffered a lot with his mental health afterwards, not because he wanted to keep the baby, but because of how rushed, manic, and honestly, just selfish I was during it. I was teaching undergraduate students, and a, now ex-friend, friend asked me to offer my students summer work producing this new thing called NFTs. I wasn't too familiar with what they were back then, this was about 5 years ago, and from what I read, it sounded like a kind of dumb concept, but easy summer work and cash for my students, so I pitched it to them. It turned out that the guy running the company was a notorious scammer who had already spent time in jail, and I had just exposed my students to his latest bullshit. I'm not the kind to overreact normally, but I was extremely proud of that job and the reputation that came with it. I thought it was the end of my career and any chance of ever being trusted by students again, so I panicked, tried, and thankfully failed, to off myself, and subsequently fell into a severe alcohol abuse problem and had to resign. I was extremely fortunate in that my bosses and team were super supportive of me and looked out for me every step of the way. I couldn't have asked for more help than they gave me. It wasn't the end of my career at all, but I couldn't face teaching anymore after that. I'm now long-term sober and still work in academia, and I am so grateful to be back on my feet and haven't thrown it all away over a momentary crisis. Not going to the doctor when I should have. I noticed that I was having issues standing up. I thought that now that I'm in my 30s, this is normal. Months went by, and not only was I having trouble trying to stand up, my left hip and leg were hurting like hell with every step. I decided to keep working because I lived alone at the time and I had to make bills. After 8 months of suffering and pain, climbing on and off a forklift. I had enough. Every step I took, I was fighting a tear from shedding. After a month of x-rays and MRIs, the doctors found it. A tumor had made itself an unwanted guest on my spine, and it was pinching a cluster of nerves. This was in 2021 and COVID was in full swing. When the doctor told me they had to do emergency surgery, part of me was too scared to say yes. The other part of me was ready to get this over with and not be in pain anymore. I'm grateful that half one. They got the tumor out. It was benign. 
so I didn't have to worry about cancer. They also told me that if I waited any longer, I would have been paralyzed from the wasp down on my left side. I'm dyslexic and have a hard time reading. So I never went to school after high school. All I've ever known was working physical labor jobs. I love working with my hands. Now I have to stand and sit at random times. I can't walk too far without a walking stick. Even with that, I'm limited in how far I can walk. Sitting in a vehicle and getting in and out of it is painful. The only thing that makes me happy is my motorcycle. The seat was custom made for my nerve pain. So it doesn't hurt to sit in it. But as of now, I have no source of income. My insurance on my bike has lapsed. Now all I have is VR chat. I am an extroverted person. So sitting at home all day is driving me mad. I take medication for the pain. But it doesn't get rid of it completely. It just dulls it some. Because I didn't go to the doctor when I needed to, I'm now jobless. I lost the home I was renting. I have no source of income. I can't ride my bike. I can't do office work because of my dyslexia, I've tried just to try and make some money. I'm trying to get on disability. But the government is dragging its feet on it. Even with a layer. I'm useless. I'm jobless. No woman will talk to me. My life is a lonely hell just because I didn't go to the doctor when my body told me to. I jumped on the shallow side of the pool. I was drinking and thought it was the deep end. I tried to do a front flip and smack my head on the bottom. I came up, reaching for my head, and my face flopped into my hand. I quickly held it in place against my skull and got out of the pool. We wrapped my head in a towel, and I threw up. The ambulance was there within 10 minutes. They sent two ambulances and a fire truck, and there were 10 plus responders. I think they might have been bored and wanted to see the carnage, lol. Anyway, at the hospital, my neck started hurting, and they did a scan and x-ray, and nothing was broken. However, my face was spilt from the bridge of my nose straight up my forehead, then went to the left a couple inches. I ended up getting 20 stitches to hold my forehead together and 20 staples on my head. Healed pretty well. Now I just have a scar people are scared to ask me about. I'm extremely lucky, I was able to walk out and go home about 4 to 5 hours later. I've heard so many stories since this happened to me, and now I am extra cautious around pools. So yeah, don't dive drunk. I was in a shared house while at university with a friend and a couple of her friends. I had a lot of mental health problems and had come straight out of 16 months in the hospital to university, which she knew, and she told her friends. She had her own MH struggles and understood a good deal, and so did her boyfriend. Then the person I thought of as my little sister killed herself and told me her plans in advance. She was under section, legally forced treatment, in the hospital but at overnight leave. I called the hospital, and they just got mad at me because I was a former patient and it was inappropriate for me to ring. I have never felt more helpless in my life, I developed bipolar disorder, instead of straight depression. I got hit by a car, a week later, one of my friends died from an asthma attack, and two days after that, one of my closest friends of 10 years died of nutritional collapse. Two months later, I was cutting myself and, genuinely accidentally, went too deep, creating a murder scene while I got a towel before calling an ambulance, which obviously scared the shit out of all my housemates. But the worst was three months later. My PTSD was absolutely horrendous, and my best friend came to visit me. Thank God everyone was out of the house at the time, because she died in the middle of the night in my room, the coroner ruled misadventure, her prescribed medications, and alcohol. She frequently got drunk and took her medications. The thing is, this time she had gotten drunk, and I'd been the one to literally feed her her meds before putting her to bed. I'd administered the stuff that killed her, and it messed me up so badly. I was a total basket case after, bearing in mind I was three quarters of the way there before, and that's why she visited. I really, badly, severely traumatized my friend, and I hate that I did that. I didn't do it for SHT and giggles. I've looked her up online, she moved to a university and graduated, but have never reached out and never will, as I know I will re-traumatize her, and I'm not that selfish. But I hope so much that she has been able to move on from the damage I did to her. So my wife is very supportive and assures me it wasn't a mistake, but it was. I graduated fairly late into my 20s after finally accepting my chronic health issues and the requirement that I limit myself physically in many ways to succeed. I have always been interested in a PhD, but I was also encouraged to work for a few years by my undergrad advisor. My wife also has severe chronic health issues, somehow worse than me. I majored in computer science and am very strong in algorithms, math, and machine learning slash AI. When I graduated, I had two main options, go work for big four tech, at the time it was four, for a lot of money, 
offers, or pursue a research position at a fairly prestigious institute. I chose to go to the research job, which, all in all, was a phenomenal place. The problem was that the project I was placed on interrupted my COVID and my health, but most importantly, the advisors on the project were essentially dealing with other stuff in their lives. So, six years later, we are still unpublished. My wife has sat there with me in borderline poverty for years. She cannot work physically, she has tried many times but is ultimately let go once they grow tired of her calling out sick so often. I applied to graduate school and got a decent offer, but not as good as the ones I would have gotten if I had had two plus papers to my name, including the first author. So I declined the offer, could I, but most importantly, my partner in life, survive on 33k slash year? The answer is pretty obvious, given what I said above. It sounds like a privileged mistake, I get it. I'm lucky in a lot of ways. I have ways out, given my background and abilities. But the impact it's had on our lives has been huge. I essentially sacrificed a ton of money and time, we are in our mid-30s now, and I currently do not have a job, waiting for one, though. And we aren't really fighting ability or options here, we are fighting time. We had hopes of adopting her since she cannot biologically bear children, but that's probably GG now too. By the time we get settled enough to be responsible parents, we will be in our 40s. Our health is projected to get worse, so you are fighting time from a few angles. But maybe we can adopt as older parents, I don't really know. So we are a married couple, having been together for 14 years and married for 5 years, living back with my parents and two brothers who are also struggling with health. She loves my family but hates it here. I don't blame her. We live in a crowded box, and she feels trapped. So I guess you should think very carefully about what path you will initially pursue upon graduation. It can change a whole lot of your future in ways that you won't be able to predict. I've been fairly lucky in my life, so genuinely, it's the same answer to some other questions, I chose the wrong girl. I'm not a player by any means, but I was seeing two girls and eventually decided to get serious with one. We were together for about a year, and then she left me, moved away, and never really spoke to me again. The other was so much better for me. We had more interests in common, we had similar life goals, but instead of talking to her, I made the incredibly smart decision to just ghost her. It was a bit awkward when we worked together. I know now what I did wrong, and if I ever got the chance, I'd do it differently. But I won't. I'm sure she's happy never talking to me again, and I really hope she is happy. Meanwhile, I'm older, more emotionally mature, and more secure that whatever happens in life, I'll treat people better. This could have been far, far worse. I was at a large event where everyone was car or tent camping in these huge fields. I was partying with a group about a one-third mile walk away from my own campsite, maybe a bit more. We're getting absolutely bombed, and I decided to go fetch some more beer from my cooler. My dumbass decides I can probably cut through this patch of wood instead of just following the paths on the road. I stumbled and fell a few times but didn't turn back. I drop my phone, and as I am looking for it, I step into this awkward gap between two logs, and I fall. I was probably one tiny more rotation away from snapping my knee, instead, I sprained both my knee and my ankle, and I'm on the ground, like, what the fuck did I just do? It's pitch black, I'm alone in the woods, and I really am not sure where I am. Adrenaline was enough to get me up on my feet. I luckily found my phone, and I limped my way until I found my way out of the trees and eventually to my car, where I just grabbed some water and a bag of ice, sat down in the passenger seat, and went to sleep. I told everyone that I stepped off the side of the road to avoid a truck and twisted my leg in a ditch, which was a believable story, because I was embarrassed about how stupid of a choice I had made. Honestly? Not an immediate fuck up like a lot of people, but a slower moving one. I am not taking care of my mental health. I'm bipolar, and I went through a few different medications, gave up hope, and started self-medicating heavily on marijuana. Anyone who is bipolar knows how bad regular drug use can be for your brain. I was functional, but life was slipping in a lot of senses. After a traumatic bipolar episode at 33, I finally got on the right medications. Damage has been done. I haven't taken care of my body or mind for a while, and some things I can fix and some I can't. It is and remains the biggest mistake of my life, but a perverse one that, inevitably, I had to make. One day at a time, one step at a time, one breath at a time. Getting arrested for felony retail theft was probably my second worst mistake. Getting arrested again a few years later for felony drug possession was definitely my worst mistake. The only thing that saved me from having my life completely destroyed was that I was a disabled veteran recently home from Afghanistan, so I was allowed to go through an absolutely grueling drug treatment program, 
And if I completed it, they would give me an CIS instead of a conviction. Which essentially means I pleaded guilty to the crime but was not convicted of it, so by most definitions, I am not a convicted felon, so I can vote and own a gun and stuff. Though there are always random times, it can be an issue. Once I got hired to be a licensed loan officer, my company died home loans in every state, but during licensing, some states wouldn't let me be licensed in their state, and in others it was fine. My company was fine and understanding and was making it work since I only needed like eight states to do my job, until the state of Georgia found out and apparently told my company by their definition I was a giga felon, and not only was I not allowed to be licensed in their state, their law says I was not even allowed to be employed at my company in any capacity. Basically, Georgia told my boss that unless they straight up fired me, my entire company was at risk of not being able to license loans in Georgia. My bosses really did go to bat for me, but it was pretty futile. They gave me an unbelievably generous severance package, but this was pretty brutal as it was weeks before COVID lockdown started and I couldn't find a job to save my life for months. An ex crashed my beloved car. They were only supposed to be going down the street to the grocery store. They called me, saying they had just crashed my car on the way and that they were abandoning it. I found out later that they were going to pick up drugs downtown. They didn't have a license. I was at home watching their kid. I had my neighbor, who was a family friend of theirs, drive me to pick them up. I told the police I was the one who was driving and left the car there because I was scared. Everything cleared up for me, no points on my license, but my car got totaled, and my ex never fully paid me back. I should have reported the car stolen and gotten my ex sent to jail. I was a dumb kid.